Hello everyone, before we get to today's episode on Temple Grandin, I just wanted to check in with everyone to see how everyone is doing. I want to welcome new listeners from Mumbai, India. Um, Welcome to our listener family. If you would like to reach out and leave a voicemail or email that would support the listener family, you may do that at mindsetmatterspodcast1.com. And that is our interactive website where you can leave either um, an email or a voicemail that would be played on the podcast. If you can't think of anything to say, if you would just answer the prompt of what gives you hope, that would be nice to share with the listener family. Um, also, if you have ideas of stories you want to hear, if um, there's someone you think is a good match for the podcast and would like me to do an episode on that person, please drop me a line. I'd be happy to do that. Um, so anyway, I hope everyone's doing well and we'll get to the show. Imagine a world where autism isn't a limitation, but a unique window into the mysteries of animal cognition. Temple Grandin, a name that resonates with innovation and empathy, has shattered conventional thinking and opened a door to a realm of astonishing insight. As we delve into the life and work of this exceptional individual, we'll uncover the awe-inspiring story of how Temple Grandin, an autistic pioneer, has forever transformed our understanding of not just the animal kingdom, but also the human spirit itself. Join us on a captivating journey through her extraordinary achievements and be prepared to be inspired by the boundless possibilities of the human mind. Welcome to Mindset Matters, the courage to continue the podcast where we explore the extraordinary lives of ordinary individuals who have overcome immense challenges and emerged as beacons of inspiration. I'm your host, Lisa Sinclair, and today we embark on a remarkable journey into the life of one such individual. This is episode 13, The Courage to Think Outside of the Box, The Hero Heart of Temple Grandin. Born into the vibrant city of Boston, Massachusetts, Mary Temple Grandin emerged into a world of privilege and distinction. However, her journey was marked by a unique twist, a twist that would shape her identity in more ways than one. Within her family's opulent estate, there was another Mary, an employee, and to evade any mix-up, young Mary chose to go by her middle name, Temple. This simple decision would set the stage for an extraordinary life. Temple's lineage was as illustrious as it was diverse. Her mother, Anna Eustacia Purvis, embodied a blend of talents, ranging from acting to singing, and boasted a lineage tied to innovation. Anna was the granddaughter of John Coleman Purvis, the co-inventor of the aviation autopilot. Additionally, she held a degree in English from the prestigious Harvard University. With such a unique heritage and the determination to carve her own path, Temple Grandin's story was destined to be nothing short of remarkable. Within the intricate web of Temple Grandin's family, we find a diverse tapestry of talents and legacies, each sibling painting their own unique strokes on life's canvas. Temple is the eldest of four siblings, her nurturing spirit extending to her younger sisters and brother. In her own words, she has described one of her sisters as grappling with dyslexia, a testament to the challenges and strengths that run in their family. Her youngest sister, a soul touched by creativity, found her calling in the realm of artistry, while her other sister embarked on the path of sculpting, chiseling beauty from raw materials. Meanwhile, their brother, in a different sphere altogether, ventured into the world of finance as a banker. Temple's father, Richard McCurdy Grandin, was a real estate agent. He was the heir to an agricultural empire, Grandin Farms, a name synonymous with the vast wheat fields that stretched across the United States during that era. But the Grandin family saga was far from ordinary. Temple's journey to discovering her autism began in the mid-20th century, when understanding of the condition was limited 
and often misinterpreted. In 1947, in her early childhood, she showed signs of her unique sensory experiences and challenges with social interaction. However, it was not until later in life that her condition was formally diagnosed. Temple's parents were instrumental in recognizing and understanding her differences. They observed her unusual behaviors and difficulties in social situations from an early age. Temple's mother, Eustacia, in particular, was deeply committed to understanding and supporting her daughter. It was through her tireless efforts to seek answers that Temple Grandin's autism was eventually identified. Eustacia consulted numerous experts and specialists in the field, hoping to unravel the mystery of her daughter's behavior. Eventually, they came into contact with a neurologist, Dr. William Carlock, who had experience with autism. In 1950, when Temple was just three years old, Dr. Carlock officially diagnosed her with autism. This diagnosis came at a time when autism was not well understood, and the prevailing view was that it was a form of childhood schizophrenia. Temple's diagnosis helped provide some clarity and direction for her family, as it allowed them to explore ways to support her unique needs and challenges. From that point forward, Temple and her family worked diligently to find ways to help her thrive in a world that didn't fully understand or accommodate individuals with autism. Her mother was especially proactive in seeking early intervention and tailored educational programs, which played a crucial role in Temple's development. Let's talk a little about autism. Autism Spectrum Disorder, or ASD, is a complex developmental condition rooted in distinct brain differences. While some individuals with ASD have identifiable genetic factors contributing to their condition, many cases have origins that remain a mystery. Researchers posit that ASD likely arises from a combination of multiple factors that collectively influence typical development pathways. Yet much remains to be uncovered regarding the precise nature of these factors and their intricate interplay within the ASD spectrum. The journey of understanding the causes of ASD and their specific effects on individuals affected by it is a continuing exploration, one that holds the promise of unveiling greater insights in the future. Individuals diagnosed with ASD often exhibit distinct patterns of behavior, communication, interaction, and learning that set them apart from the majority. Notably, their appearance typically does not differ significantly from that of others. The spectrum of abilities among individuals with ASD is broad and diverse. While some may possess advanced conversational skills, others may remain nonverbal. Daily life requirements also span a wide spectrum, with some people with ASD requiring substantial assistance for various tasks, while others can independently manage their work and daily lives with minimal or no external support. The unique and multifaceted nature of ASD emphasizes the need for a personalized approach to understanding and supporting individuals along this spectrum. ASD typically manifests before a child reaches the age of three and can persist throughout an individual's life, although symptomatology may evolve and improve with time. The onset of ASD symptoms varies widely among children, with some displaying signs as early as within their first year of life. In contrast for others, symptoms may not become evident until they reach the age of 24 months or even later. Notably, some children with ASD experience an initial period of acquiring new skills and achieving developmental milestones until they reach approximately 18 to 24 months of age. However, at this juncture, they may plateau in their skill acquisition or in some cases regress, losing skills that were once acquired. The intricate and diverse nature of ASD underscores the importance of early detection and tailored interventions to support each child's unique developmental trajectory. As individuals with ASD transition into adolescence and young adulthood, 
They can encounter challenges in forging and sustaining friendships, effectively communicating with both peers and adults, and grasping societal expectations in educational or work settings. Moreover, it's not uncommon for them to grapple with additional concerns like anxiety, depression, or attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. These co-occurring conditions are more prevalent among individuals with ASD compared to those without ASD, and they may come to the attention of healthcare providers seeking support and guidance for comprehensive care. Individuals diagnosed with ASD frequently encounter difficulties related to societal communication, interaction, and the presence of restricted or repetitive behaviors and interests. Additionally, they may exhibit distinct approaches to learning, mobility, or attention. These unique traits can pose significant challenges in their lives. This diversity underscores the importance of recognizing and embracing the individuality of each person along the autism spectrum. Back to our story about Temple. In her tender years at the age of two, the baffling label of, quote, brain damage, end quote, was affixed to her, a classification that would persist for decades. It was only through the relentless pursuit of truth, aided by cerebral imaging studies at the University of Utah, that the clouds of uncertainty began to lift. Remarkably, it wasn't until Temple reached the age of 63 in 2010 that the erroneous brain damage designation was rightfully debunked. The true turning point occurred during Temple's adolescence when her mother stumbled upon a diagnostic checklist for autism. As she meticulously reviewed the list, a realization took root. The enigmatic puzzle of Temple's behavior and experiences could be best deciphered through the lens of autism. This revelation marked the beginning of a journey into self-discovery and understanding. Ultimately, Temple was identified not merely as an individual on the autism spectrum, but as an autistic savant, a distinction that would illuminate her exceptional talents and contributions to the world. Her story serves as a testament to the enduring human spirit and the transformative power of self-awareness. Temple's mother, with unwavering hope and a resolve to find an alternative to institutionalization, sought the counsel of the world's leading special needs researchers at Boston Children's Hospital. After a thorough search, a beacon of possibility emerged in the form of a neurologist who dared to challenge the status quo. This visionary specialist suggested a groundbreaking path, a trial of speech therapy that could potentially unveil the treasures hidden within Temple's world. From the tender age of two and a half, Temple embarked on this transformative journey, guided by a dedicated speech therapist who tailored her sessions to Temple's unique needs. But the web of support didn't end there. A nurturing nanny joined the team when Temple was just three years old, engaging her in the educational games for hours on end. As Temple ventured into the world of formal education, the Dedham County Day School became her canvas of growth. Here, teachers and classmates alike rallied to create an environment that not only embraced her unique needs, but also celebrated her sensitivities. In this nurturing atmosphere, Temple's journey of self-discovery began to flourish, setting the stage for the remarkable path she would eventually tread. Despite these vital mentors, she candidly acknowledges that her junior high and high school years were fraught with challenges, marking what she describes as the most trying phase of her life. Recalling those formative years, Temple paints a vivid picture of herself as the, quote, nerdy kid, end quote, a target of ridicule among her peers. She endured moments etched in her memory, walking the school's hallways while fellow students taunted her with the moniker, quote, tape recorder, end quote, a nod to her habit of repetitive speech. In retrospect, Temple can now find humor in those moments, but the pain she felt back then was real and profound. It was at this time that her mother made a pivotal decision to enroll her at Hampshire Country Day School in the picturesque town of Ringe, New Hampshire. 
Founded in 1948 by the visionary child psychologist Henry Patey, this institution was specifically designed for students of, quote, exceptional potential, end quote, who struggle to thrive in conventional academic settings. At Hampshire Country Day School, Temple found a space where her unique talents could flourish. Here, she not only excelled academically, but also ascended to the esteemed role of Winter Carnival Queen, and in an awe-inspiring twist, became the captain of the school's hockey team. It was a transformational period in her life. It was not just the accolades that defined this chapter, it was the profound influence of one individual, William Carlock, a science teacher with a prestigious background at NASA. Carlock would become Temple's mentor, a guiding star who played a pivotal role in nurturing her self-confidence and igniting her boundless potential. In the backdrop of the school's idyllic surroundings, Temple's story of resilience and mentorship unfolded, offering a glimpse into the transformative power of an environment that recognizes and celebrates people with exceptional but different abilities. The spark that ignited one of Temple's most iconic creations, the squeeze machine, was kindled by none other than William Carlock. It all began during her senior year of high school, when Temple returned from her aunt's farm in Arizona, her mind teeming with possibilities about ways to calm the livestock. Temple embarked on a mission that would become a symbol of comfort and solace for individuals with sensory sensitivities, the construction of the now-famous Hug Box. Following graduation from Hampshire Country School in 1966, Temple embarked on an impressive academic journey that would shape her into the trailblazing individual she is today. Her educational odyssey included the attainment of a bachelor's degree in human psychology from Franklin Pierce College in 1970. Undeterred by the challenges of a rapidly changing world, she continued to soar, earning a master's degree in animal science from Arizona State University in 1975. Her insatiable thirst for knowledge led her to pursue a doctoral degree in animal science, which she accomplished at the University of Illinois in 1989. Through her unwavering dedication to learning, Grandin carved a path of intellectual distinction that would eventually revolutionize the field of animal science. In the mid-1980s, Temple first spoke in public about autism at the request of Ruth Sullivan, one of the founders of the Autism Society of America. Sullivan writes, quote, I first met Temple in the mid-80s at the conference. Standing on the periphery of the group was a tall young woman who was obviously interested in the discussions. She seemed shy and pleasant, but mostly she just listened. I learned her name was Temple Grandin. It wasn't until a week later that I realized she was someone with autism. I approached her and asked if she'd be willing to speak at next year's ASA conference, and she agreed. The next year, Temple first addressed an ASA audience. People were standing at least three deep. The audience couldn't get enough of her. Here, for the first time, was someone who could tell us from her own experience what it was like to be extremely sound sensitive. She was asked many questions, like, why does my son do so much spinning? Why does he hold his hands to his ears? Why doesn't he look at me? She spoke from her own experience, and her insight was impressive. There were tears in more than one set of eyes that day. Temple quickly became a much sought-after speaker in the autism community. End quote. Drawing from her own life experiences, Temple passionately advocates for early intervention in addressing autism, emphasizing the pivotal role of supportive educators who can skillfully channel the intense fixations of autistic children toward productive avenues. Her unique perspective sheds light on her heightened sensitivity to sensory stimulus, particularly noise and the distinctive way she processes the world around her. In her candid revelations, Grandin offers a glimpse into the inner workings of her mind, where words play second fiddle to vivid mental imagery. She describes herself as a thinker who operates primarily in the language of pictures, where information transforms into a mesmerizing slideshow of mental images, each one open to manipulation and correlation. 
It's this exceptional visual memory that Grandin credits as the cornerstone of her success as a humane livestock facility designer. Her memory functions like a collection of full-length movies stored within her mind's vault and available for replay at her command, enabling her to scrutinize the minutest of details. Furthermore, she possesses the unique ability to revisit her memories from altered vantage points, manipulating the lighting and shadows to observe the nuances of each mental scene. In essence, Temple's mind is a vast and dynamic landscape, a testament to the extraordinary capabilities that can emerge from the world of autism. Temple is an advocate for embracing neurodiversity. She firmly opposes the idea of eliminating genes associated with autism or seeking to, quote, cure mild forms of autism. Her stance underscores the value of diversity in the human experience. However, Grandin recognizes that for severely disabled and nonverbal autistic children, tailored therapies such as ABA or applied behavioral analysis can play a crucial role in helping them function and engage with the world around them. Her perspective acknowledges the importance of individualized support for those with more profound challenges on the spectrum. Today, she stands at an average height with an upright posture, projecting an air of confidence and determination. Her salt and pepper hair, which has become an iconic feature, frames her face with a touch of distinguished elegance. Grandin's warm and expressive brown eyes reveal the depths of her empathy and insight, often lighting up with passion when discussing her areas of expertise. She typically sports practical and comfortable attire, reflecting her pragmatic approach to life and work. Her calm and composed demeanor exudes a sense of purpose and wisdom, which has earned her the respect and admiration of many. Temple offers a unique perspective on emotional relationships, candidly expressing, quote, the part of other people that has emotional relationships is not part of me, end quote. Her life journey has led her to a path less traveled. She has neither embraced marriage or parenthood. Beyond her groundbreaking work in animal science and advocacy for human rights and autism rights, Temple's diverse interests encompass horseback riding, exploring the captivating world of science fiction, immersing herself in the magic of movies, and delving into the complexities of biochemistry. Her multidimensional passions reflect a life rich in experiences and a mind forever curious. Temple's accomplishments and recognitions have been numerous. In 2010, she was featured in Times 100's list of world's most influential people in the heroes category. In 2012, she achieved induction into the Colorado Women's Hall of Fame. In 2015, she received a Meritorious Achievement Award from the World Organization for Animal Health. In 2017, she was inducted into the National Women's Hall of Fame. As someone who has overcome extraordinary challenges, Temple stands tall as a prominent advocate, recognized globally for her fervent advocacy in the realm of humane treatment for livestock destined for the slaughterhouse. Her influence in this crucial arena has earned her accolades and citations from far and wide. And she's not just a voice for animals. She's an internationally renowned spokesperson with her insights into the world of autism resonating deeply with people across the globe. Her unique perspective and unwavering dedication have catapulted her into the limelight as a distinguished figure in both the realms of animal welfare and autism advocacy. Let's hear a little audio clip from Temple herself. I can remember the frustration of not being able to talk. I couldn't get my words out. My speech came in gradually, a few words at a time. When I was a little kid, I was very autistic, nonverbal, rocking. You know, that's the kind of kid they just put away in the institution. But I had a speech teacher that worked really hard with me, and I can't emphasize enough the importance of the young children getting early intervention. You got a two-year-old or three-year-old, no speech, don't wait. High school was absolutely worst part of my life. Teasing, teasing, teasing. I got kicked out of school for throwing a book at a girl, teased me because 
You know, teasing really made my life miserable. And the only places I could get away from teasing was the specialized activities. Things like horseback riding, electronics lab, model rocket club. The line was drawn in the sand. I was not allowed to become a recluse in my room. I had to get out and do things. I'm always kind of baffled at just how illogical people are in their thinking. I'm very logical in my thinking. But when I was younger, I didn't know that other people thought more in words. You see, I think in pictures. If I don't have a picture, I don't think. And my mind is very, very associative. Being a visual thinker, I have to I tend to put things into categories. You see, autism is a very big spectrum. At one end of the spectrum, you've got half the people at Silicon Valley. And then at the other end of the spectrum, you've got somebody who's very handicapped, remains nonverbal, is, is going to have to live in a supervised living situation. Really, really big spectrum. And, you know, Einstein probably be labeled autistic today in a lot of school systems because he had no speech until age three. I'm interested in seeing something that makes real change. I've done a lot of work that's made a lot of improvements in the livestock industry, and I think I've helped a lot of kids succeed. I want to see the kids that are like me succeed. That's the kind of stuff that makes me happy when I see the things that I do make a difference. Hey, everybody. I hope you have enjoyed today's story about Temple Grandin. If you know somebody on the spectrum, you know a little bit about um, Temple's struggles, and um, but also what she has overcome. And um, it gives hope for all of us who either love someone with autism or maybe um, are on the spectrum ourselves. So um, if you and if you don't know anyone on the spectrum, I hope it gives you a little more insight into people with um, uh, different levels of neurodiversity. So, as a parent of a child with autism, I have learned a lot from reading Temple's books. Um, One is The Autistic Brain, co-authored with Richard Panic, and another of her books, Thinking in Pictures, the expanded edition, My Life with Autism, uh, that she co-authored with Oliver Sacks. Uh, Another book she has written um, is Animals Make Us Human, Creating the Best Life for Animals. And that is co-authored with Katherine Johnson. Please visit our website at www.mindsetmatterspodcast1.com. I would really love to hear from you. You can drop us a line. You can read the blog where there are pictures of all of the individuals we have talked about. And there's also a microphone you can click on to leave a voicemail that we can play on a future podcast. So please join us in some way. Our next episode will be about Ellie Wiesel. I hope to see you then. Thank you for giving your time to listen to this episode of Mindset Matters, The Courage to Continue. You are of value. You are loved. You are not alone. If you are struggling with thoughts of suicide, help is available. Dial 988 24 hours a day for free confidential support. If you are not in crisis but need support, please feel free to reach out to me at the email mindsetmatterspodcast numeral one at gmail.com. Again, that's all lowercase mindset matters podcast the numeral one at gmail.com. Remember to change your day by what you think and say. We'll see you next time.